for Canada's top soldier paid a surprise visit to the base. Paul. Kevin, it's a challenging issue for Canadian forces, not only having to implement strict procedures for how they handle detainees, but trying to ensure safe treatment for them after they hand them over to Afghan authorities. Canada's top general, Rick Hillier, landing at Kandahar Airfield this morning as Canadian forces take part in a major offensive against the Taliban and as the issue of detainee treatment remains unsettled. It was Hillier who'd signed an agreement with Afghan officials aimed at ensuring humane treatment of detainees. But that deal has been criticized as not good enough. Today, he answered questions about that. Uh, uh, no regrets whatsoever. We're in certain circumstances here, and we think we have a very good agreement with the Afghanistan government. Opportunity to improve the mechanics of that are you know, always pot uh, potentially there. And it's not just Hillier on the hot seat. Last night, his boss, Defense Minister Gordon O'Connor, arrived in Kandahar to visit the troops. He, too, faced similar questions and promised to get some answers today in a meeting with the head of the Afghan Human Rights Commission in Kandahar. That was nice, uh, but that meeting was abruptly canceled this afternoon when the Afghan official didn't show up leaving O'Connor to continue inspecting troops on the front line and the issue lingering. The detainee issue was triggered by news that Canadian forces are investigating whether four Afghan men were roughed up by Canadian forces last year. Three of those men have not been heard of since they were released to Afghan authorities. Kevin? All right, Paul. Thanks a lot. Paul Johnson in Kandahar tonight. Well, back at home now. Global Matt. On a side street in Kandahar City, Hanjin rolls up a scrap of newspaper and prepares to smoke a small dose of opium paste. In his late 50s, he says he's been an opium addict for at least 30 years, that he picked up the habit when he was living and working in Iran. I'm a poor man, and this is the only peace I can find in my life, he tells us. Hanjin has six children. He says half of his money goes to his family, the other half to his daily opium habit. The opium trade is proving to be one of the most difficult obstacles for NATO forces in stabilizing and rebuilding a civil society in Afghanistan. Despite a national policy of opium eradication, cultivation has exploded in recent years, leaving Afghanistan with the distinction of producing 90% of the world's heroin, an opium derivative. The problem is, farmers here say they can't find a viable replacement crop that pays anything close to what growing opium does. In the past, Afghans have primarily been growers and sellers of opium, but now more and more of them are becoming users. Wandering the streets of Kandahar, trying to get handouts from shopkeepers by burning incense in their stores, Hanjin is among the growing ranks of Afghan drug addicts. The UN estimates that addiction rates have doubled in the last two years, with people like Hanjin now numbering in the hundreds of thousands. In the north of Afghanistan, aid workers have reported villages where the entire population is addicted to opium. Visibly high after a few minutes, Hanjin's circumstance illustrates yet another troubling reality for this country that in a place with few opportunities and the trauma of decades of war, many more lives are now being ruined by substance abuse. In Kandahar, this is Global National's Paul Johnson reporting.